generally, we want music out of the center channel. Never in the center channel. There's already tons of bandwidth that the center channel has to has to handle. The sound effects, the foley, the dialogue, and other things. We don't need to muck it up with music. Music can be as simple as the left and right front, and that's okay. I don't like that because those also have a lot of bandwidth they have to deal with. I like kind of bringing the music back just a little bit, and depending on the instruments, bringing it even further back. Remember, though, if you bring the music all the way back to the surrounds, in a theater at least, the surrounds are the speakers that the theater owners have spent the least amount of money on and sound the worst and can take the least amount of high fidelity. So having your music or any part of your music exclusively in the rear, eh, not necessarily my first choice, but certainly somewhere here where you can get you know, forward versus rear. So let's see what this sounds like. Let's go back to 30 and we'll solo the solo the woodwinds. Sure. And then if we bring them back a little bit. And that's nice. We can do the same thing with the horns. The concern with horns is that, and brass in general, is that they have a lot of edge to them. And if you bring them back, um, it can start detracting. So just, you know, like, oh, we're, we're especially if you're in seven one and you've got side fills. Um, in this headphone example, we actually do have side fills involved. So check out what this sounds like now. As opposed to this. So... I don't mind pulling them all back here. The the winds here. Let's find a place for our trumpet. I think the trumpet's at the end. Definitely. Here she is. Well, that's a strange trumpet. It's actually the whole brass section, less the horns. These guys definitely need to come back out of those left and right, but I'm going to keep them a little bit more forward. So check out what happens when I add the horns in now. Let's go back here. So the horns are distinct from the full brass section. Okay. <laughs> this should be brass, not trumpet. Cool. Uh, let's go back here. Let's see where pitched percussion will be. Now, pitched percussion is timpani and things like that. In this case, I've also added some keys to it. There's celeste. Looks like that's all that's in there. I think there might be more. Nope, just Celeste. So this is actually just Celeste. I'm going to take the Celeste and move it over, just like we would have in an orchestra. It's already panned. If you listen here, I'll put it back. It's sort of lefty already, so we're going to go kind of lefty, left surroundy. Take it out of the center channel, which I've forgotten to do on each one of these. Horn and the woodwind is out. No problems. And then the harp, let's see where she's panned to. Yeah, she's a little righty. Take her out of the center channel. A little bit more righty, surroundy. Awesome. And then the metals, these are the symbols and things like this. Looks like there's one right here. And those are also righty. We'll take it out of the center. Push it a little bit more over this way. Maybe even, yeah. That's cool. And then low percussion. It's just kind of banging around in here. With timpani. Especially down here at the end. Let's see here. 
Yeah, pretty cool. So I, in this case, would add a little LFE to this channel. I would also pull them back because I don't want that stuff banging away in the left unless I did. And we may get into the mix of it and say, wow, that stuff needs to come forward. But I'm going to guess it's going to mash all over there dialogue so we'll pull this back pretty far as if it were almost behind us and i'll add about 50 percent lfe so those you know so it won't be banging through the entire piece just whenever that percussion shows up and that'll be super nice choir the choir uh, it's a hard one choir it just depends on what it is you're trying to do with it, it should almost never go in the center channel Let's pull it, pull them folks back as well. Sure. Now, solo violin. This will be tricky. Because it's sort of like, you know, his, it's his uh, kind of conscience. And I might modify this a little bit and t take it out of the center speaker, but leave it here in the left and right. See, that feels much more forward, but it's not in the center speaker. It's just phantom mono. And that might feel better, like it's got its own little, it's like it's on its own. Lonely, which is kind of the idea. Here's our string ensembles. Definitely going back there. I won't add any LFE to that. Here are our bases. Let's go to the end here. Now they're panned a little right anyway. That's okay. We'll help them with that just slightly and then we'll make it wider, maybe a bit more. And I'm not going to add any low frequency LFE to that. It, I'll take it out of the center channel, though, as I will. These. I keep forgetting to do that. Let's listen to the strings together. And then here at the end with the solo. Oh, right, because we have the orchestral effects. That's why. Now, orchestral effects are just all kinds of nonsense, so we're going to spread them out, but leave them a little bit more forward and out of the center channel. And I like that violin forward a lot. Let's see what it sounds like with his dialogue. Face must hide what false heart doth know. Beautiful. That's beautiful. 